All right, guys, what we're going to do today is do like a basic tutorial with the Litchi app um, on using the waypoints. Now, <clears throat> the Litchi app, uh, the waypoints are very good on this device. Um, they're not as good, in my opinion, as the, uh, the Parrot software, but it's real close. Okay, it's real close. So... I just think the Parrot software is just a little better, and I think it's a little bit more accurate, too, because I did a few flights with this, and I noticed that the positioning was just a little hair off. So you just got to be careful when you're using this if you're going around a building or something. Don't get too uh, close or anything like that. So you just want to keep up. Make sure you got a safe distance because the GPS on this thing is just not as precise. It's close, like I said. But, okay, first thing you want to do is you want to set up the app and turn the app on. And then you want to uh, go click this button up here in the top left corner and go to Waypoint. Okay, and what it's going to do when it first, uh, when the screen first comes up, it's going to put you where you're at. Okay, and this is where I'm at. This is the apartment building I live in right here. So it's setting me right there. Now, before you start placing anything, what you want to do is hit this little X button here on the right, and it'll say clear map. That's just in case you have a button clicked on here somewhere when you were messing around with it before, and it's still on there when you load the software back up, and then you go plug new ones in, and the thing drifts off a mile away. So you want to always do that first. And then this little uh, crosshair up in the... Um, a top right uh, corner there below the gears before the options that'll put you back to the beginning if you start looking around for a place to map out and you get you know you get your you get lost you know you get oh i don't know where i'm at here and blah 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 all you got to do is hit that crosshair and that'll stick you right back to where you started so what we're going to do is we're going to do a little short one here and I'm just going to go over to that little park I always go to. Well, it's not a little park. It's a pretty decent-sized park. It's over here past the mall. There's the Monroeville Mall, which I have one set up to go around that already. But that's one of them ones I have to do real early in the morning before anybody wakes up. So that park is right behind there. And there it is right there. Right there. There's another one, a little smaller one right behind that, but the one I always go to is right here. That's Pioneer Park. So what you want to do is you just want to get uh, to where you're going. And to, you know, to make the map bigger and smaller, you just pinch it, you know. Or to spin it, you just turn it like that. Put two fingers on it and wiggle them back and forth. It's real easy. This is very simple to use software, very simple. So what you want to do, when I'm at this park, then you guys have seen tons of videos from this park because it's, it's close to my house and it's, you know, from one end of this park to the other end of this park is uh, 700 and some feet. So that's plenty of distance for me to fly the majority of these toy quads that I fly around. So this, is, this park's plenty big enough for me for 90% of what I do. So we're going to do... Uh, quick layout here on this thing the first thing you want to do is place your first thing you know set it down and another nice thing about this software is just like the parrot one you don't have to be flying before you start it the quadcopter can sit on the ground and you just hit the go button and it'll just take off and go where on the Zeno and the Autel Evo, you, the, the, the quadcopter has to be flying to initiate the waypoint this thing you don't. And another thing with this thing, if you're using the Spark, you have to use the OTG cable. It won't work with just using the Wi-Fi. So you got to remember that too. So you have to have the OTG cable hooked up to use this. So the first thing you want to do is place the first waypoint, which is right there. I'm going to put the first one there. And it defaults at 98 feet. So what I'm going to do is click on that, and then this thing is going to come up got your altitude slider and all that here and i'm going to go with for this park i 
usually never go above 200 feet. So I've set it up to 200, 202 feet right there. It says speed, use cruising speed. Well, that's in the options. Okay. So I got that one right there. Now you can change the cruising speed by hitting the options, which is on the left, the third one down. And it has the mission settings. It has heading is custom. Finish action, I always put none. Some of them you can hit return to home, you can land or back to the first one. I just hit none and just land it myself. The path mode is straight lines or curved turns. We're just going to deal with the straight lines today. I'm not going to get into the curved turns. And there's your cruising speed there, 12 miles an hour. And then there's your max flight speed and the curve size and the gimbal pitch mode. I don't mess with this. I leave it disabled. That way I can manually tilt it myself. That's how I like to do it. So I'm just going to put cancel there. So we'll set the first waypoint here at 202 feet. So then we'll come over here and I'll hit this one here. And then when I got to this, you see it's pointed the other direction. So what you want to do is click on it. And scroll down here to heading, and you slide this heading button, and you can see the little, the arrow, it's kind of sh shadowed out, but you can see it spinning around there. So I want to spin it over to point to the center of the park, which I just did. As you see it now, it's pointed to the center of the park. And then it tells you the distance between the two points. So that's from right there to right there is 299 feet, so 100 yards basically. So my next waypoint, I will come over to here. Now that's 357 feet between that waypoint and that waypoint. Now in the bottom left-hand side, it'll tell you your total distance and how long the flight is. You'll see it says distance 656 feet and the time is 48 seconds. So then in my next waypoint, I will go right here. Now that's 346 feet to that one. Then the heading, I will change that, and I will point that one toward the center of the park also. So that's pointing toward the center of the park. The next one, I'll shoot over here, and I'll change the heading on that the point toward the uh, basketball court and the tennis court there. Then the next one I'll put right here, and I'll change that heading to point that toward the baseball field. Then the next waypoint I'll come back close to where I am. And I'll tilt that heading back toward the uh, stadium also, back toward the field. Okay, so that's going that way. Now, say you make a screw up and you went, oh, you want, you want to go back two or even three. It doesn't matter. All you have to do is click on the, the waypoint, which on this one would be the seventh one. And then all you have to do is click the little the waypoint marker that's up on the top left here where it says waypoint seven settings. Hit the little thing there with the little red dot on it you hit that and that'll delete that and then it'll go back to the the sixth one and you can delete that one too you can just keep going backwards deleting them and we'll delete that one too so that's how you just get rid of the ones you don't want so i'll put this one back here change the heading a little bit to point there then i'll put this one here We'll change that heading to go out to the middle. Then I'll come back this way here, and then I'll lower the height on this one. I'm going to lower the height this one to um, a hundred feet. And then what, what I would do, like I did last week with the parrot, I just did another loop around the gazebo here at a lower at a lower altitude because I'm still safe here 
at 100 feet. Let me change the heading here to face the gazebo. Yeah, this is probably like 65 or 70 feet, this tree. So at 100 feet right here, I'm still safe. Change this heading to go face that way. And then just go back. You know, I'm just going back. That's fine. And then right there. And then I would lower that one down to, let's see, 50 feet. And basically that would be the end of it for this, for this trip right here. So this is 3,018 feet and the flight time is four minutes going at the speed that I am. Now you can go into the settings and change the speed and all that'll do is change the amount of time it takes to do it. You know, I laid out a couple of pretty long ones. Actually, one of them I laid out is a mile and a half, but it was going to take too long because I had it too slow. So I had to go into the settings and then change the, uh, the speed on it. I had to go about uh, 15 more uh, feet per second to make it in with uh, within the battery life. So that's the thing about these things. They'll go, you can go pretty dang far with these. So that's how you do it right there. That's your basic. Now you can make these curved turns and all that stuff, but that's, you know, it's not that much more complicated. But this is something that's pretty simple that you can go out. You can just try it out, lay out something nice, nice and easy. Go out to some kind of park that you know you're not going to run into anything. You could even do it you know, say within here, within just the baseball part of it and just go around in a circle if you wanted, just to practice. It's always good to practice. And the thing about these satellite maps too, you got to realize they're not always 100% accurate because you don't know how old they are. So what I always do is I always actually physically go out to somewhere where I'm going to do this and recon what's around there, if anything new's been built, if there's a some cell tower that's been put in or anything like that, before I do any of this kind of stuff, I always physically go out there and look at it with my eyes before I set up one of these flight plans. So I, w I have this flight plan all done right here. So I would just go over here to the little uh, disc on the left and hit the little diskette, and that's going to save the mission. And I'm just going to put Park 22. So that one's done. So the only thing I would have to do if this thing was connected to the quadcopter right now, all I would have to do is hit that little, the well, first thing I would do is hit the recording button. Okay, so that, that's on the right, the red mark there. That's the video button. I would start that, and then I would just hit that little arrow that's on the left-hand side, the fourth one down, that little play arrow. And then it'll just go. It'll just take off and go. It'll just take off and do it. And in four minutes, it'll be back. I mean, you'll be able to see it because you're only, you know, I think the distance from, this is the furthest distance right here. From this point all the way to that first one is 700... I think it's about 710 feet or 720 feet, something like that. So you would be able to see it no matter what. And you'll still be able to hear it at that distance also. Unless it's the Anafi, then you can't. Okay, you can hear the Anafi at uh, 700 feet. But uh, at the Mavic Pro or any of them, you can hear those. And another thing with this too is you can use any DJI quadcopter with this you don't have to set it up differently i could take a spark and turn it on and run this i could take on the mavic pro and it'll still do it you don't have to specify what quadcopter you're using it'll work with all of them now the only one i haven't tried it with is the phantom 3 but i'm sure it works with that also now if you wanted to load a mission that you'd already done I could go in here and go, um, 
Let's see which one I, uh, Kennywood Park. I have that one loaded up. Or I have that one all mapped out for uh, a little bit later on. Now that's 6,000 feet at six minutes. Now there's Kennywood Park right there. Now it's not open yet. But what I'm going to do is launch off of this little boat ramp over here that I found on the satellite that's right across the river. And I'm just going to go down this way and then back across the river or back down the river and go up high enough. I will be about 200, yeah, 200 feet up. So that would be plenty of room to see the park. I'm not going to go into the park or anything like that. I might get a little closer when I do. I want to do it at night, too, so I might get a little closer for that. I might come over the railroad tracks. But this is on a big hill right here, so the elevation of Kennywood Park is probably pretty damn close to 100 feet or more from the banks of this river. So I will have to adjust some stuff if I, when I get ready to do the flight at night. I'll have to adjust some things on there, so... All right, guys, I just wanted to show you the basics there of how to do these waypoints. It's really easy, you know, but just start out slow and do something real easy. Now, that's the Edgar Thompson Mill right there. I was going to do one of that one, that too, so. Um, yeah, just start out with something little, you know, something small, some park, and just go around in the inside of the park and just, you know, you could actually do these things. You don't even have to look at the screen, or you could just set the controller down and go have a sandwich if you want, you know. But the problem is, if you don't do any recon, you don't know if there's anything new, and you don't know, you know, what you're seeing. So that's why you should just always watch. That's what I do. I watch the screen when I'm doing these. And then, of course, you know, I keep the gimbal pitch on manual so I can manually do the, the uh, gimbal, so... All right, guys. Have a nice day. I'll talk to you later.